Welcome back to another Micmac Tabletop Review. Today we'll be taking a look at the recoil spring calibration on a Smith & Wesson Model 915. Here's my Model 915, probably produced in the early 90s. It's a third generation, all metal, full size, double single action, high capacity 9mm pistol. These numbered series guns were popular before the polymer gun craze. The 915 is one of the last of the Smith & Wesson high capacity Wonder 9s from the era. It's also one of Smith & Wesson's no frills budget guns from its value series. Still, it's a nice gun, although it's obviously seen a bit of use and abuse in its life. I just did a full review of this gun recently and noted that its recoil spring was getting weak. If you're interested, see episode 2023-20. The slide has been failing to completely return the battery when fired. I switched out the recoil spring from another of my Smith & Wesson full-size 9mm pistols, my Model 59, and that seemed to solve the problem. So a new recoil spring is obviously needed here, no problem. Factory replacement 14-pound recoil springs are inexpensive and readily available for this gun. That's because the recoil springs are all the same for all the full-size Smith & Wesson 1st, 2nd, and 3rd generation double single action numbered series pistols, of which there are a bunch. Of course, we're talking about the 9mm pistol series. However, as I was about to order the replacement spring from Wolf Gun Springs for about $8, I noted that a calibration pack was available with a factory weight 14 pound recoil spring and one each of 16, 17, 18, and 20 pound extra power recoil springs. And three extra power firing pin springs were also included. Well, given that I currently own three of the Smith & Wesson numbered series pistols, I thought it made sense to spend the $31.49 to have the extra springs. I mean, you never know. And to see if any of these recoil springs might appreciably improve the action on this 915 to my liking. And by the way, even lighter 8, 10, and 12 pound recoil springs are available. About a year ago, I got a calibration pack for my FEGPA 63 from Wolf Gun Springs, and the results I was able to achieve were amazing. It's a totally different gun, so I'm optimistic that I should be able to obtain at least improved results with my model 915. Let's see if that's the case. But first, let's make sure this gun is cleared first. By the way, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. So here's the calibration pack. There are five recoil springs, and there are three extra power firing pin springs. We'll only use the recoil springs here, so I'm going to set the firing pin springs aside. Now I suggest you mark the springs first thing so you can tell them apart. Out of their packages, they'll all look the same, so trust me on this. I'm just going to use a little gun sight paint to identify the springs. A little dot here with a note on the package should help me keep things straight. One dot for a 14 pound factory spring, two dots for the 16 pound spring, three dots for the 17 pound spring and so forth. It's recommended we start with the strongest spring first, and that'd be the 20 pound spring, and then move to the next strongest until we've tested them all. So we'll start with the 20 pound spring. So here they are, they're all marked, starting with the lightest, the 14 pound spring, on up to the heaviest, the 20 pound spring. Easily identifiable now. So let's disassemble the gun first. We've made sure that it's cleared. I'm going to remove the magazine, put the safety off, put the hammer back, and then we're going to bring the slide back until the end of the takedown lever is lined up with the notch in the slide. Push the lever out from the other side and remove it. That allows us to remove the slide. And then we just remove the spring and rod and we're just going to replace the spring. We'll set that one aside. We're going to begin with our 20 pound spring. I can tell an immediate difference. The spring is very, very hard. 
With the 20 pound spring in place, I can return it to the frame. Let's put the extractor down. So how will we test? Well, first we're going to rack the slide for feel. With the old recoil spring, the slide was very easy to rack, but then the spring was obviously too weak. We'll rack the slide with the hammer down and with the hammer back. How does it feel? This slide is dramatically heavier with the 20 pound spring, probably more than necessary. But here's the thing, a stronger recoil spring should also reduce felt recoil. That could affect not only shooting comfort, but performance as well. I've complained about my accuracy with this gun compared to my other Smith & Wesson numbered series guns. Perhaps a stronger recoil spring will correct that. So eventually we'll need to fire the gun. I think 10 rounds per test will tell me what I need to know. So I'm going to take the time here to test each recoil spring starting with the strongest, the 20 pound spring. I'll fire 10 rounds and compare each with my performance with the other springs and see how I do. I think I should be able to weed out the extreme results, then refine my trials if I need to later. To be consistent, I'm shooting Federal Ultra Target and Range 9mm 115 grain ammo for all trials. And speaking of consistent, I messed up with the 18 pound spring trial by using an extended magazine because of my large hands. Extended magazines tend to give me an edge on accuracy. So for this test, changing that variable was a mistake. At the range with the target set out to 25 feet, my typical training distance, I'll start with a 20 pound recoil spring installed. I'll be aiming at the upper left 6 inch target. The slide is very heavy to rack even with the hammer back. The gun seems strained. Next to last round didn't fully eject. No lock open after the last round. Accuracy is not great. I really didn't pay attention to felt recoil due to how the gun behaved. Sorry. With the 18 pound recoil spring aiming at the upper right hand target. Still very heavy to rack but better. The gun seems more normal good and solid. Felt recoil is actually pretty good and muzzle lift seems mild too. Accuracy is better. The slide fails to lock back after the last round again. That could be due to the magazine so I'll need to check that out. However, I don't think the 20 or 18 pound springs are likely to be chosen anyhow. With a 17 pound recoil spring aiming at the middle left target. Much better to rack, even okay with the hammer down. Felt recoil is a little heavier, but still mild. Overall my accuracy still doesn't seem very consistent. Slide locks back okay. With the 16 pound recoil spring aiming at the middle right 6 inch target. Racking feels good, even good with the hammer down. I can feel the felt recoil a bit more, but muzzle rise still seems minimal. Accuracy at 25 feet is greatly improved. Closer to what I'm used to with the 9mm full size pistols. With the factory 14 pound recoil spring aiming at the lower left target. Light to rack feels very good. However felt recoil is noticeable and muzzle rise has increased a bit. While my clustering is good, it's a little off center I don't think it's the sights. It's going to be a close call. So how did I do? Well, it would appear that I did best accuracy wise with the 16 pound recoil spring. And it felt good to rack too, even with the hammer down. Not as good as the 14 pound factory spring, but felt recoil was milder and muzzle rise seemed better with the 16 pound spring. 
It's my accuracy that obviously benefits from the heavier recoil spring, but even one more pound, as in the 17 pound spring, seemed to throw me off a bit. Interestingly, the felt recoil seemed best with the 18 pound spring, but it only improved my accuracy a little. Uh, my sweet spot with this gun appears to be the 16 pound recoil spring. Good accuracy, and the gun feels good when shooting. Moving the target out to 35 feet and returning to the 16 pound recoil spring and shooting a bit more confirmed that the 16 pound spring seems to work pretty well for me and this gun. Accuracy was good given the target was 35 feet out. To do this right though, I should probably try these springs, at least the 16 and the 14 pound, more at 35 feet to see which I'm more consistently accurate with. After I put the cameras away, I did a little more shooting with the 14 pound and 16 pound recoil springs before I left the range for the day. It was close, but in the end, the 16 pound spring won out overall for consistent accuracy and the improved felt recoil was a bonus. Although the gun feels right with the 16 pound recoil spring, I think I'll try this again another day to see if the 16 pound spring remains my choice. Switching back and forth is easy enough, but for now, I'll stick with the 16 pound spring. Now before we end today's video, I'd like to remind you if you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. As far as I'm concerned, the recoil spring calibration pack was a successful way for me to improve my Smith & Wesson Model 915. The function of this gun is noticeably better than it was, and my accuracy is certainly better. If I just replaced the recoil spring with the factory 14 pound spring, I never would have known I could perform with this gun with a little stiffer spring, and that would have been a shame. I'm not sure if everyone would come to the same conclusion with these springs and their own full size Smith & Wesson first, second, or third generation double single action numbered series pistols. I suspect not. In fact, I'm curious if I choose the 16 pound recoil spring for my Smith & Wesson models 39 and 59, although I'm pretty happy with them as they are. For now, I think it's important to consider that since these springs will also fit the other full size Smith & Wesson pistols in the 39 and 59 series, implications should apply to them as well. I think that's good. And even better, it's fairly inexpensive to find out for yourself. I'm sure Wolf Gut Springs would be more than happy to supply you with a couple of different size springs or recoil spring calibration pack to help you with that. Okay, I'll admit the differences I experienced between the 14 and 16 pound recoil springs wasn't huge. And yes, I probably could have saved a few bucks if I just bought a factory weight 14 pound spring and been done with it. But then I wouldn't have known what I know now. To me, that was worth it. So wrapping up, I had a bit of criticism for the Smith & Wesson Model 915 when I reviewed it in an earlier video. I complained that it wasn't as accurate as my older Smith & Wesson Model 39 and 59, and I said it didn't feel as good to shoot. I suspected the grips and even the grip angle was the case. I feel a bit bad about that now. While this Smith & Wesson 915 is indeed from Smith & Wesson's economy value line, it would appear that with the new recoil spring, this gun feels pretty good to shoot, and I admit that I'm as proficient with it as I am with my other Smith & Wesson numbered series pistols. In my mind, I think that's a pretty good outcome. I hope you found this review to have been useful, and remember, any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.